Welcome and thank you for joining us for today's Dealer On webinar, Step Up Your SEM Game with Critical Strategies That Deliver. My name is Eliana Raggio and I'll be your moderator today. Today's webinar is being presented by Dealer On. For anyone who isn't familiar with Dealer On, we're an award-winning website development company and digital agency, best known for our amazing SEO, the best customer service, and the highest converting website designs in the industry, including the award-winning Chameleon Responsive Website Platform. When we got back from NADA earlier this year, we were awarded the Driving Sales Dealer Satisfaction Award for top-rated websites for an unprecedented sixth year in a row. We also took home the AWA Award for Best Websites, plus FCA announced that we're now an approved vendor. We're still the only company in the industry that offers a money-back lead guarantee program. Phew, we got a lot of stuff going on over here at DealerOn. You want to know more? Yeah, you do. You can check us out at DealerOn.com. DealerOn is going to be presenting at the upcoming Internet Battle Plan August 8th and 9th. Our good friend Jim Ziegler is hosting his 22nd Internet Battle Plan Conference this August in Clearwater, Florida. It's going to be amazing. If you've never been to one of these iconic events, I need to tell you, you got to see what all the buzz is about. Jim's got nine top-of-the-line speakers to educate dealers on Internet marketing strategies, and Sean Raines and Greg Gifford are two of them. So join them there for an unforgettable 48 hours of learning and growing in Florida next week. For more information, you can go to deal, I'm sorry, you can go to internetbattleplan.com. We have a great show in store for you today. We're very pleased to have the one and only Sean Stapleton as our presenter today. Sean Stapleton is the CEO and co-founder of Dealer Teamwork, an award-winning company that creates a significant competitive advantage for dealers with their impressive lineup of first-class solutions. Sean's storied experience in the automotive industry includes IMS, Who's Calling, and Vin Solutions, coupled with his extraordinary leadership skills and successful track record, make him a revered consultant and an esteemed mentor to many. He is widely regarded as an extraordinary sales leader and is also admired for his fresh insights and brilliant contributions to several top automotive trade magazines. Sean is a popular speaker at numerous automotive events and a highly respected member of the automotive community. He can be reached at Sean at DealerTeamwork.com. And you can catch up with Sean Stapleton and the rest of the Dealer Teamwork crew at the upcoming Internet Battle Plan 22. Yes, this time he will be teaching how to use transactional data as your biggest competitive advantage. He'll show the best ways to improve your marketing efforts and get more buyers to see your vehicles. Just another incredible addition to this already tremendous event. Get more info at internetbattleplan.com. Don't miss it. Now, during this presentation, if you have any questions, please use the question feature located on the corner of your screen to submit them. At the end of the presentation, we'll answer those questions of general interest. If we're unable to get to your question live, we're going to try to respond by email later today. Don't forget, a link to download a copy of this webinar recording will also be emailed to you later today for your reference. Feel free to share it with your friends and colleagues. And guess what? Our good friends at Dealer Teamwork, they're giving away some amazing prizes today on the webinar. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a Dealer Teamwork hat. Then one lucky webinar attendee is going to also win a Dealer Teamwork golf shirt. And finally, one more of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a Dealer Teamwork backpack. These are awesome prizes. You have to be on the live broadcast to win it, though, so stay tuned. And who knows, you might be one of the people winning an amazing prize today. Also, at the conclusion of this webinar, you're going to get a short survey. Fill it out. We're always looking for quality feedback from our audience. We want to know what you think of today's presentation. And hey, do you tweet much? We hope you do. We'd love to see what you have to say about today's presentation, so please tag us in it. You can use hashtag DealerOnWebby. I'm at Eliana Raggio. You can also hit up Sean Stapleton at S Stapes. We look forward to seeing what you're saying. Now let's get started. Let's learn how to step up your SEM game with critical strategies that deliver. Sean Stapleton, so nice to have you back on the show, sir. How are you? I'm fantastic, Eliana. How are you? I'm doing great, and I'm so happy that you picked this topic because, honestly, I think if there's one place that dealers are really struggling nowadays, and and maybe it's not so much that they just don't know enough about it, it might be because there's so much change in that arena, it's it's SEM. The digital landscape, I feel like, is changing all the time. So that you're here today to teach people the essentials of what they absolutely need to do and then what they also need to do to step up their game is critical. So thank you so much for bringing this to our attention. And I know you have a lot to get to. So where do we start? 
let's go ahead and say, first of all, thank you very, very much. And let's start with some of the objectives of today's call, right? I want to talk about exactly right, SEM, it's critical. You know, we see today that what we used to call mass media years ago is now moved into two areas, search engines and social media. So search engine marketing is absolutely critical if you need your products and services to stand out or be found by consumers today. The modern shopper is searching for products and services differently than before. So today's objective, we're going to talk about SEM. We're going to talk about your increasing your click-through rate with better relevance. How do I increase my click-through rate? Become more relevant. Leverage expanded text ads. What are expanded text ads? How do we use them and what's the benefit? How do you use them to your benefit? And I want to talk about some giveaways. We're going to answer some questions and give some examples of exactly how to use this to your advantage. Does that sound great? That sounds awesome to me. Let's go. So let's go ahead and start with a poll question. Is that fair? Let's get everybody's brains warmed up. Eliana, would you take us through a first poll question? It would be my pleasure. Audience, your first of three poll questions is on the screen now. Of course, we would love it if you'd participate in this poll question. So the question is, which best describes your process of marketing your vehicles and their current offers? Please select one of the following. They only give you one campaign ad. They make two campaigns or variations to the ad. They make three campaigns or variations to the ad. Or, you know, like 153 based on custom offers with real time transactions and ad extensions. Or do you have no idea? you have no idea what the process of marketing your vehicles and the current offers are. So once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. And people are already voting. Oh, audience, you are just rock stars today. Thank you so much. Yes, we will have another couple of poll questions coming your way a little bit later on. But right now, we want to know kind of, you know, where your SEM stands right now. Are you just doing one campaign and one ad at a time? Do you do variations on that ad? You just change it up a little bit? Do you make three campaigns at a time? Or, you know, you have so many great ads, custom offers, real-time transactions, and even different extensions, you can't count. So we're just going to call that 153. So, oh, the votes are coming in fast, Sean. We'll give it a couple more seconds, and then we'll close this poll and share the results. And I think you're going to be surprised by these results, Sean, if I do say so myself. You know, this crowd, we've got some really – top end people on the call, so nothing would surprise me. I learn from the people on this call every single day. Okay, all right. Well, I'll tell you what, audience, we're going to thank you already for participating in our first of three poll questions. Thank you so much. We're going to close this poll now and share these results. Okay, so what surprised me most is how evenly split it was across the entire spectrum of answers that we gave. So 14% of today's audience say, one, they only give you one ad campaign. One campaign, one ad. You know, 18% said they, they run two campaigns or a variation to that ad. 20% of today's audience say three. They make three campaigns or variations to that ad. 23% of today's audience say, oh my gosh, so many, 153, whatever, based on custom offers, real-time transactions, and different advertising extensions. And then the majority, but not by much, 25%, a quarter of today's audience say they have no idea. Sean, does this surprise you? Because it surprised me. It does a little bit. It, you know, obviously it shows us that there's a lot of opportunity for improvement. It also shows us there's a lot of advanced people on this call, which doesn't surprise me. Dealer on webinars tend to bring the best and the brightest out of the automotive industry. I mean, it's pretty simple to think about, though. If you have one message and you have 1,000 people looking for something, right, if you happen to have 153 messages, don't you think there's a higher probability of a relevance or a connection to the offer? I mean... I mean, if you have one message, you got to hope that that one message is going to resonate with as many people as possible. But if you have 153 messages, you have a better chance of at least one of those messages, yeah, resonating with a lot of different people, you know. Yeah, no. That's I exactly it. So we basically believe or what we've seen is the more relevant and precise when a consumer goes and types something in a search engine, the more relevant and concise the response, the higher the click through, the lower the cost. So in theory, the more ads you've built, you have more variations to answer the consumer's question. So the higher the opportunity to connect with the consumer, the higher the ability to convert traffic. Agreed. Okay, where do we go from here, Sean? 
let's just jump right in and talk about how we can increase click-through rate with better relevance. Does that make sense? Yes. Let's jump in. So watch this. Let's pretend we're doing a search. And let's do a search as basic as the word Ford F-150 lease. Let's start with the very, very beginning that most people don't understand. What does a search engine do? A search engine only does three things. The first thing it does, it sends a bot out to understand what's on the page and index the data. So it takes a snapshot of what it can see and what it can read. It puts that in an indexable format so it can create a ranking. Why am I explaining this? Because that's how search works. Okay, those three basic things. And then if I add this, a consumer goes and types the word Ford F-150 lease. What do you think they're looking for? I believe what they're looking for is a, what a Ford F-150 lease costs. And again, the more relevant and precise the response, the better the click-through rate, as well as the better the rankings. Let me show you what I mean by that, okay? So if I type in Ford F-150 lease, and this ad was to come up now, is this very relevant? Now, obviously, we block some of the things to protect the innocent, if you will, right? But if I type in Ford F-150 lease, does this answer the question? Have fun driving the all-new Ford F-150 pickup. Get your best price here. Well, uh, excuse me, that's what I'm trying to do. So this ad is a yucky ad. It's a milk toast ad. Why do I say that? Because the search intent isn't being answered. It's not relevant and precise. It's milk toast. It's average. It's, it's, it's not really answering the consumer's question very well. Let me show you what I mean by that. See that ad? F-150, best in class. Now, if I did this, same exact query, and look at this ad. Now, see how relevant and precise it is? The word Ford F-150 lease, again, is what the keywords that we're indicating or looking for. You can see this ad is a 2017 Ford F-150 lease. It doesn't even know what type of lease. Is it a payment lease? Is it a zero down lease? I don't know. So why not create both offers and put it there, increasing the relevance? You'll also see it's got a buy and a save. It's got the highlights or a marketing line, if you will, which we'll get into in a second. And it's got the different extensions to go to making it extremely relevant, extremely helpful, answering the question, and also even providing more information than the original search intent may have even meant to be. The more helpful and responsive, the better you answer the question, the better the click-through rate. It's really simple. So take a look at this, right? So this is that ad we're talking about, Ford F-150 lease. So one of the best ways to save money on paid search and all types of search is to write better ad copy. The better the response, the more relevant and precise, the more specific. Think laser focus, not shotgun approach, right? Remember, better ad copy increases your click-through rate, which improves your quality score, which does many things. A higher quality score means that it is a cheaper form of doing business and digital marketing. It means you're going to get shown up higher. Quality scores may be the difference between whose ad shows up in what order. It's more cost effective. What do I mean? I'll make it very clear. Good marketing costs less. Bad marketing costs more. It should seem simple, but that's true. It's been that way for a long time. And guys and gals, listen, bland doesn't work. Stale milk toast ads don't work anymore. People are looking for specific information. The more relevant and precise, the higher the click-through. Look at that examples again. Ford F-150 lease. I'm answering the question. Look at the second one, a tier two ad provider. Get a great deal on one. Well, that's kind of what we're looking for. We're trying to understand, is it a lease? Now look at the next ad, the third one down there, which is also a paid search ad, right? That's a yucky. It doesn't answer the intent. It's not standing out. It's not using the information the consumer's asking for to help answer it. Look what it says. Have fun driving, live chat, huge inventory, two locations. Now wait a second. If I absolutely fell in that don't add, how would I get a hold of them? Oops, forgot the phone number. We'll get to that in a second. But really, make sure, when you notice something in my presentation, notice the things in orange. They're things we really, really, really want you to take as away, right? Very specifically, the more specific you are with your responses, the more believable and relevant you become to both users and search engines. Remember, if you're not building ads correctly, Either the search engines aren't going to understand what you're offering and it's going to cost you more money or you're not going to rank well. So the secret is make sure you're building ads not just for people but for search engines and the structures they need to understand what you have. Let's keep going. 
Leverage extended text ad, expanded text ad. Let's jump in this. This is fun. Okay. So let's go. What is one of the biggest changes AdWords has made in the past 15 years? Expanded text ads. Yes. One of the biggest changes in the past 15 years in AdWords expanded, extended text ads. Why? Well, let's answer that after our poll question. Eliana, would you take us away for poll question number two, please? Poll question number two on the screen now. Audience, you did so well on the first one. We're hoping for more awesomeness on the second one as well. The question is on the screen now. So here we go. How confident are you in the performance of your search engine marketing? That's what we want to know. Yes, we want you to rate yourself. So please select one of the following. Are you an SEM ninja? You're always number one and you always blow the competition away? We have an answer for that. Do you uh, like to keep up with the competition, but you admit you know you could be doing better? Do you have a long way to go and you admit <laughs> we're, we're not great, but you know, hey, we could be worse. <laughs> Okay, we have that answer. How about, we're completely lost, we're performing terribly, we know we need help. Or then we have the last answer, you know what, I have no idea how our SEM is performing. We have that answer as well. Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. And I want to let you know, audience, we're also looking forward to a really nice, wonderful, robust Q&A session with the one and only Sean Stapleton. So if you have questions for Sean Stapleton, send those questions in. I will be holding those questions till the end. But you know what? The earlier... the the earlier you send in your questions, then the earlier your question gets asked, all right? So votes are coming in nice and fast. Audience, you are awesome today. Thank you so much. We'll let this go for another couple seconds, and then we will close this poll and share the results. All right, Sean Stapleton, are you ready for this? Absolutely. I know you are. All right, here we go. Uh, let's see. 18% of today's audience say they're SEM ninjas. They're number one and they blow away the competition all the time. 18%, that's how they're ranking themselves. The majority, however, almost half, 48% of today's audience say they do their best to keep up with the competition, but they realize they know they could be doing better, which is probably why they're here today. 20% <laughs> of today's audience say they have a long way to go, but they could be performing worse. 7% of today's audience say they're completely lost, performing terribly, and admit that they need help. And the last 7% of today's audience say they have no idea how they're doing with their SEM. Sean, I don't know if this helps you at all, but those were the answers from today's audience. Well, two things that stand out to me. Number one, again, the types of people that are on these learning uh, seminars and webinars tend mm -hmm. to be some of the best and most advanced people in the industry. That's why they stay competitive. So it doesn't surprise me on number one. Number two, at 48%, I believe when you look at things like search engine marketing, it's never ending. It's a living, breathing organism. Things are changing. Search is changing. Relevance is changing. Um, what your consumers are looking for, time of year, all those things factor in. So I always say you can always do better. Even if you're the number one ranking, how do you stay there? What's changing? How do you do it cheaper? Things like that. So when I see answers like that, it gets me very excited that people are starting to understand how is traffic really showing up at your store? And what we're finding out is search engine marketing is absolutely the, one of the most critical elements for success today. So um, let's jump right here and get to the next part of this, shall we? Yes. So let's talk about expanded text ads, right? And it's going to tie together with how we get our rankings. What expanded text ads are. Expanded text ads were introduced by Google because of the way people are changing. What do I mean by that? The number of people searching on a mobile device was one of the most critical things. The relevancy in the ads. Google's constantly, Google, Bing, Yahoo, they're constantly looking at the search results to understand how they can be better. The way they make money is by helping consumers find what they're looking for as easy as possible, right? So when they built these expanded text ads, it was designed to do a couple things. Create more relevance and be able to support mobile search better. So. What we did, or what they did, is they give you 50% more increase to the character limits than the original standard text ads. So bigger is better. And we're going to talk about a lot of reasons why, right? But number one, you just got more characters to discuss your products and services better, more relatable. 
Okay, they're designed to maximize ad presence and performance on a mobile search. Mobile search is critical. Many of you know that we are just out at MozCon, one of the top SEO, SEM, you know, digital marketing events in the nation. Happened to run into Greg Griffin, one of the greatest guys in the world from Dealer On. And guess what? It's all about mobile. What they said is mobile is dominating so much, it needs to be your first thought, your second thought, and your third thought. If you're not in the mobile game, you really don't exist to search engines or to marketers anymore. So by using these expanded text ads, it allows us to have bigger headlines. Bigger is better when it comes to headlines. People are very distracted. We're being bombarded with lots of media today. So let's make sure that our headlines are relevant, precise, and written correctly. And more importantly, why do I keep saying bigger is better? There's only so much space, Eliana, above the fold. And we all know the click rate drops off considerably when you're below the fold. So first place, second place, and third place, particularly on mobile, is critical. As the world changes to oral search or URL search, guess what? The only the top position is going to be the one served up. Dear Siri, where should I buy a Dodge truck in my area? The only answer that's going to come up is the number one position. So rank position is going to be even more critical in the future, not less. Okay? And then ex the other thing is expanded text ads show, all, show on all devices. Yes, it works on desktop, mobile, etc. And when the device itself or screen size is limiting, it'll automatically wrap the text around giving a better user experience. Guess what that does? That makes your ads even bigger. So that's going to push other people down. Can you see on the left-hand side, there's some really good examples of what we're talking about. We're going to get into this a little bit more. So let's get into this right now. Again, Sean, why are extended text ads so important? It's really simple. They were created to increase the ability of mobile usage, making it easier, faster, better, stronger for mobile users to be able to buy, see, find, and relate to your services. Remember, more than half of all searches are mobile. But what's even more critical is where they are in the purchase funnel, right? Many, many, many of the zero moment of truth people are using a mobile device to confirm, is it a good deal? Is it a fair deal? You know, should I be looking at something else? What are my peers saying, right? So when Google rolled this out, it was designed to take advantage of creating more relevance, allowing the content marketers to put more relative content, not milk toast, come see my new truck, specifically. Let me give you an example of what might be in here. Look at that ad. Expanded text ads allow you to answer the question better. Well, do it. Let me show you what I mean. What do the new extended text ads look like? Well, take a peek at it. First of all, there's some big differences, right? The first one is what's available. There are now two 30-character headlines versus one 25-character. See that? See on the left-hand side, the 230s? And the one's the old example with 25. Look at the next one. You have what's called a destination URL, with now they have two options with URL path fields versus manually entering the display. See how that is? That allows the consumers, the people searching, to understand where you're going to put the traffic to make sure that's really relevant. You know, is it going to land on a new Ford? Is it going to be on the used Ford? Is it going to be on the pickup trucks? Or is it going to be on the sport utilities? People are trying to understand because they're not silly. They're used to this thing called search now. Again, the more relevant and precise. And then one of the last things are that's really important is now we have one 80 character description versus two 35s. Okay, again, what we're allowing us to do is answer the question better for the consumer. See what it's talking about, the new pickup versus the old pickup? Simply put, more characters mean more descriptions, which means better content, which means better click-through, which means better engagement, which means higher profitability. Guess what? You now have 140 total characters versus the old 95. It's 50% ad space increase. All right, all right, you got me. Nerd alert, stop. It's technically 47, but what the heck, I'm in sales, I round up. You know that. It's technically 40%, 7% bigger to be exact. We that all way, round up, Mr. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that way Mr. Josh Copeland or other great people on this call aren't gonna send a text saying, Stapleton, your math's wrong, but you're in sales. Thank you, love you guys, right? So. What does this mean to you? What does this mean as the consumer? Well, number one, more space, better headlines, is better conversion, right? Look at the differences in the ads. Which one is more relevant to you? Again, I, what if I typed in Ford F-150 lease? The one on the right-hand side obviously is an example, but look on the left. See how the more characters give us more ability to be very specific? It allows us to add more things like descriptions, et cetera, right? 
So I hope everybody can see the difference. I'll show you multiple times again. It's a very, 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 very big advantage. Matter of fact, it's the largest advantage that Google says it's had in the last 15 years. So please take advantage of it. Next, do expanded text ads improve click-through rate? Of course it does. Don't be silly. The more relevant and precise, the better the click-through rate. The consumers of today are smarter. They're not falling for the old tricks. They're in charge of where they go. They can find the data. If you have a yucky ad, they can hit the deadliest button in the world, the back button, and they're gone forever, right? So yes, ex expanded text ads improve click-through rate by giving more visibility, more transparency, and more precise accuracy of what they're looking for. More text space creates more opportunity. Think about a newspaper ad. If you've got a three-line newspaper ad versus a 12-line newspaper ad, which one's going to give you more detail? Okay? And then here we go. More text space also means something very critical. It means that if you're maximizing all of your characters and you've got good rank position, you have an opportunity to push other people further down the page. And again, if anybody doesn't know this, the further you go down the page, the lower the conversion, the lower the clicks, particularly on mobile. If you're not really in the top three, I hate to say it, but you're really not in the game for the highest click percentages. So yes, expanded text ads include, increases, improves click-through rates. It also improves everything, costs, relevance, engagement. So let's make sure we're paying attention to a couple things. What does this mean? This is important, pay attention. This means your ads need to be optimized for the new formats. I'm gonna go through this a couple times, but let me give you an example, right? We've gotta make sure that our new ads include the keywords. This is very, very important. If you're using your keywords in your ads and they're optimized to your page search and your SEO and SEM, there's a higher click-through and a relevance. Okay? Make sure you're writing your ads differently. Just like a book, use capitalization in the right spots because it's going to look odd if you don't. Look, let's be very, very honest. You've got to rethink your text ads. You've got to rethink, am I taking advantage of every character? Am I saying and talking almost like a Twitter where I'm getting the fluffy stuff out and getting the meat and potatoes what people are looking for? Make sure your headlines are searchable. Like Add things that are really important and relevant, right? That's easy to understand, like price. If someone's typing in Ford F-150 lease, put the lease price in it. How many available to? How long will the sale last? Only till Thursday. Countdown clocks, things like that, those drive serious amounts of engagement. Okay, And then make sure you use those additional paths to help you understand where they're going to go. So your ads should be written now to use this format. Your old ads don't look great in the new format because the old ads were built for the old ads. The new ads are built for a new look and feel. Google gave you 50% more ad space. Please, please, please take advantage of it. If you're not, you're being very wasteful with your ad spending. You're not maximizing the opportunity. So let's use extensions to further increase our click-through rate. What do I mean by that? Let's talk about that. First of all, let's talk about what extensions are. Extensions are extra piece of information that can be included to expand your ad. It's more relevance, it's more specific. Some examples of ex uh, extensions include site link extensions, call extensions, call out extensions, location, review, and structured snippet extensions. Again, for this presentation due to time limits, we're only gonna talk about three today. We'll talk about site link, call, and call outs today. But there'll be some spots at the end we'll show you where we got all the data, you can look at all the rest, call us if you wanna go through more, but these are the ones we're going to talk about. You can see on the left side, highlighted in red, the three that we're going to talk about. Okay? You can see that you can see that you have the site links, you can see the call extensions, and the call outs over there on the red side. We're going to go through this in a second. Okay? But before we do, we get to go to poll question number three. Eliana, take us away. Mr. Stapleton, thank you so much. You're doing great on this webinar. I love this. All right, audience? Third poll question is on the screen now. It's an easy one, too. We want to know how often do you utilize extensions in your paid search ads? Please select one of the following. Do you use them all the time? Always. Use them as often as possible, and you're always optimizing. Do you use them sometimes, and you realize that you should be using them more often or more consistently? 
Do you use them rarely? You seldom take advantage of that free tool. And you're probably kicking yourself right now. <laughs> Do you use them? Never. I have never used them. And in fact, I just learned about ad extensions today. Or do you have no idea what's happening with your search engine marketing and, and if you're use a lot, utilizing extensions? Once we get a majority of the votes in, we're going to close this poll and share the results. Ooh, the votes are coming in fast and furious. I like it. Audience, thank you so much. And uh, also, we already got a couple of really wonderful, very insightful questions from some audience members. So if you would like to be included in that Q&A session, Send in a great question for the one and only Sean Stapleton. We'll be getting to that. Actually, in not too much time more, uh, he's he's uh, kind of close. Sean, aren't you kind of close towards the uh, the end of your presentation? Heck yeah, we're getting there. And then we have to get to Q&A, which is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. No, really, Sean's great at answering questions. So make sure you get those questions in, okay? Um, let's uh, give you a couple more seconds, and then we will close this poll and share the results. And wowza, wait till you see these answers that are coming in. My audience is the best. I just want you to know. All right, audience. Eliana, one of the things that's crazy is, I, I mean, before you even show me the thing, please, I hope everyone's using them, right? If you're not, this is something you really need to put three stars next to your important calendar list because you're, you're in trouble. I mean, I'm just going to say it that way. If you're not in the game with this right now, you're in trouble. Yeah, Your but you marketing know, dollars aren't going far enough. But you know what? If they're not using them, and now they know that they should We're be using them. We're going to explain it. Yeah, but now that they know that they should be using them, this is going to instantly make a swift and dramatic change to your SEM campaigns just by adding exactly these extensions. Right. So you're already one step better than you were, you know, 45 minutes ago when we started this webinar. So let's close this poll and share the results. All right, audience, thank you so much for your votes. Almost half, 46% of today's audience, well, guess what? They're saying always, they always utilize extensions. They use them as often as possible, and they're always optimizing. Hot diggity. 24% of today's audience, so a solid quarter of today's audience, say they use them sometimes, but they admit they should be using them more often and more consistently. 10% of today's audience say they rarely use them, and they're ashamed <laughs> they're seldom taking advantage of this free tool. I added the word ashamed, but you know what I mean. 7% of today's audience say they never use them, or they just learned about ad extensions today, and 12% of today's audience say they have no idea if their SEM or their paid search ads are utilizing extensions. Sean Stapleton. First of all, anybody that needs any more help, please call. We're happy to answer any questions after this. But please, this is something absolutely critical. Google made this change to increase the ability to have your products found in search. And they're doing it because of the change in how consumers are shopping, particularly on mobile. And if you're not using this new technology, you're just not giving yourself a fair, equal opportunity of everybody else. Ad extensions have been in round for quite a while now. There should be no excuse. If you or your vendor you're working with are not using it, it's time to either immediately change that or immediately find a new vendor because they're killing you. And I mean that in the nicest way. I see a lot of people today that still have their old ads running in a new extended format, that's still, that's milk toast, that's yucky, that's not taking advantage of it. As well as we still see many large dealer groups and competitive dealers not using this. There are plenty of people in this industry that are not taking advantage of it. So if your market's not, you're gonna dominate. I'll give you a very specific example. We were one of the first organizations to go exclusively to all of the new formats. Our budgets for our customers had to change almost instantly because the click-through weight skyrocketed. I literally remember jumping on a call with the search team and they had to call each of the dealers back that were running the new ads with the new extensions because the click-through rates were literally instantly increasing. In some cases, more than 25% in the first hour that the team put them live. The only change was a new ad format. So what does that tell you? It tells you that it works. So let's jump back in and we'll keep walking through exactly what this means. We'll show you exactly how this works. So, all right, next one, clicking the button. 
What are the key benefits of extensions? Well, <clears throat> the first is really, really simple. It makes your ads more likely to be clicked on. Let's just keep it basic and easy, right? If it's more relevant and precise, answers the question, there's a higher probability I'm going to click on it. Why else? It takes minimal time to set up and make a better ad. Here's a secret. There's no additional cost. I'm going to say that again. The new ad formats, the extensions, are no additional cost. So you should not be paying any additional money to have better ads with more relevancy and a higher click-through rate. Putting all that together, it simply equals one thing, greater visibility. And remember why it's an orange. It takes up more space, so the top ads push the other ads down further on the page. Look at the example in front of us. Again, this Caseric, so Ford F-150 lease. You can see 2017 Ford F-150. You can see after the hyphen, lease for 189 a month, 378 for zero down, okay? It's got the URLs in it. It shows you where you're gonna land the traffic. It's got a phone number extension in it. It's got more information or the marketing lines are stronger, better, and you got your site links in it. So all of this, I'm gonna give this an A plus for an ad and taking advantage of this opportunity because that ad's better, okay? You can see the ad below, it doesn't quite match. So let's keep going. Site link extensions and what are they? Well, they, see the arrow in the red box? This is an example of what we're talking about. They allow you to promote your landing pages or where you might want to put the traffic. It also gives your consumer the ability to understand which one of the site extensions might be better for their search relevancy, okay? Oops, sorry. The next one is, gives you more real estate. We've talked about this a bunch, right? But basically your search engines you know, are looking for relevancy and rank. And if you can be one of the only ones showing up on the first page, Maybe your consumers or your competition doesn't even know how to find you, okay? It makes you stand out. Look at that ad. Look at the first ad and look at the one below it. Look at the first ad, look at the one below it. See the differences? Look at the size, look at the missing links. It looks like the second ad down is broken to me, okay? It also allows you to take advantage of other specific things on your page for your site. Maybe you have a quick answer session, maybe it's a chat, maybe it's a quick appointment setting, maybe it takes you to a page that answers the question better, lease first buy, something like that. Those are all now options for you and your marketing team to use to stand out. Look, Google shows the added site links to your ads, right? It will increase your click-through rate. Even if your consumers aren't clicking those, it increases your click-through rate for all the reasons we just talked about. So. Let's talk about a call extension and what they are. See the little phone number right there in the red box? You can't put your phone numbers in the ads. So Google made some changes to allow it. Look, let's be honest. I don't recommend this, but many of us are searching on our phones a lot, right? Well, if you're driving down the road and you saw this F-150 ad and you didn't have a phone number there, how would I call it? This way I can take my finger and click that button and instantly click it. Remember, the easier we make it for our customers to find the data, the easier they can convert, and now they have to get a hold of you. So adding the phone number extension is absolutely critical, particularly on mobile. Please, after this, take it and go look at your ads to make sure you've got a phone number. Because you might have a great ad, but if they can't call you, how can they buy your services? Okay? So add your phone number to the text ads, making it easy for consumers to contact directly, lets you measure the phone calls. We have what's called dynamic number insertion. There's a lot of people that do this. Basically, how many people called from that ad? That number can be trackable, it can be ranked, it can understand how many people called from that ad, or when you get to the page, then you can have a different number, right? And remember this, Google doesn't allow you to put the phone numbers in the ad, so this is the only way you can get the phone number to shoppers. Look at the ad below it, there's no phone number. You're gonna to start to see after this presentation, it's gonna look very odd if the digital marketing isn't done correctly because you're losing so much opportunity to become very obvious to you, okay? Call out extensions. What are they and why are they important? Typically they consist of lists of related features or highlights that make your ad more important or more relevant to the search. Right, things like, maybe in the Ford or this example, longest lasting. Maybe you're talking about Ford, the new aluminum body. Maybe it's a new motor, more fuel efficiency. Maybe it's a star rating. All of those things are good examples of what you can include in there. Think about just the basics of marketing. 
What is the ad intent and what am I trying to do to stand out from the rest of the people in the market? That's a great spot to put it. That gives you more ability to be descriptive, gives you more ability to stand out, right? Very, very simple, okay? And guess what? It takes up more lines. So if your extensions are bland or you're not maximizing the space, maybe you're not gonna take up that one more extra line or it's not gonna wrap around. That could be the difference between the third place person and the fourth place person showing up above the fold. Make sense? So this is very, very important, right? Extensions will show with your ad when the ad extension or the combination extensions is predicted to improve your performance. So yes, ad extensions do not always show up. There are many critical elements that are required. Your ad position and ad rank must be high enough for them to show. Whoa, wait a second, time out, stop. What does that mean? Quality score and building the right ads the right way are very, very, very important because ad rank is a value used to determine your ad position, okay? Ad rank is calculated by using your bid amount, the components of quality score, the expected click-through rates and ad relevance, and the landing page experience all together to determine if you're gonna show up. Let's make sure we do that one more time. Ad rank is calculated by using the bid amount, the components of quality score, the expected click-through rate, the ad relevance, the ad intent, and the landing page experience. So if you land them on a home page or a bad spot and they bounce, that's going to affect the next time people are searching. This is very, very, very important, and this is where 95% of digital marketers have no idea, and they're telling dealers the wrong stuff. Your ad position is critical, as we know, for click-through. It's also critical for ad extensions, ad value, and ultimately quality score. Now, you'll notice on the screen we have Google AdWords help resource, and they'll be at the end again, because there's a lot more than we have time today on this. So please take a couple minutes and learn it. You will give yourself and your dealership a major competitive advantage by taking advantage of this free service that's available right this second, okay? Remember, extensions give you the extra space for additional contact, for the additional transactional data at no additional cost. So let me just ask, why wouldn't you take advantage of this gift from Google? Next, let's start to go with some of these closing thoughts. Pros and cons, there's always a pro and a con to everything, right? Pros, extended character limits enable the advertisers to be more descriptive in their copy, benefiting in a higher click-through rate. Remember the old bland ads, I'm gonna buy a blue F-150. That would never get clicked on. I'm gonna buy a blue F-150, one owner, mileage, ratings, et cetera. All of the other ad intent elements that would help me understand between a milk toast offer and something I might actually pay attention to. The cons, hey, guess what? Larger ads may push lower rankings further down. So if you're not good at what you're doing today and you've been playing in that third and fourth position, you might be in significant trouble because someone like me is gonna come in and optimize around you, you're gonna disappear. Pro, increased character limits may also increase competition for a top ad position. Yes, it does. Guys, the world's not getting less competitive, it's getting more competitive, get over it. We're not gonna be giving out blue ribbons for 13th place anymore. Sorry, I apologize if I hurt your feelings. Guess what, Google is playing the same game. Search engines, guess what, the people doing things right are gonna continue to win. People doing things wrong are gonna continue to lose and spend more money. So extended headlines and description boxes allow expanded text ads more seamlessly blend with organic. What does that mean? It's gonna be harder to determine between a paid ad and an organic ad because they're gonna start blending together. Well, guess what, if you're doing it right, that's good for people like us, why? Because we're gonna dominate in paid and we're gonna dominate in organic. And guess what, you're not gonna show up. So when you put the two combinations together, it's a wicked game changer. The pro, expanded text ads appear larger. We've talked about this a bunch, particularly on mobile. Why am I pointing that out? Because guys, gals, if you're not the top three positions in mobile, more so than any other device, you don't really exist. The click-through rates and the engagement rates after the third position on mobile are significantly more than double digit decreases. And the last con, reducing the distinction between paid ads and organics may result in less qualified traffic clicking on ads or diluting performance. That's only true if you're not being relevant. 
the more relevant and precise will not create delusion. Really, this should say, if you're doing it wrong, you're going to be in really huge trouble more because Google just gave the secrets to how to do it better, and they're going to reward people doing it better with cheaper ad rates, higher, bigger placement, bigger ads, and ultimately pushing the people that don't do it right further down the page. Guess what? Google, Bing, Yahoo is focused on what people are doing right. The secret of all this is we build ads for search engines because if it's not organically correct, if it's not statistically correct, if it's not structurally correct, if it's not appealing and doesn't answer the question, you could have a great ad budget, but it doesn't mean it's going to sell more cars. Let me finish with this. Take a peek at this. This is the grand finale. Ford F-150 lease. Look at the very first ad and think about the things that you just learned about extended text ads. This top ad is using and taking advantage of all of them. You can see the additional characters, the callouts, the descriptions, the phone numbers, the site links, everything. So look at the top ad for Kaseric. Now look at the third ad down. That is an extended ad as well. But guess what it doesn't do? It's not taking advantage of it. My guess is they simply migrated to the new ads, but didn't change the formats. Look at there's no phone number. There's no good data in the top description, right? They're not even using the right verbiage. There's no extensions on it. Which ad would you click on? Look at the fourth one down. It looks like it's a mini ad. It's like a half price ad to me. It's like, what, have they only paid half price for the ad? Where's the rest of the good stuff? I'm sorry, but the only ad on this particular example that I would even find relevant and precise is the first one. I don't even think the rest of them are even relevant. I, unfortunately, this is a very good example of wasteful marketing. So with that, here are a bunch of suggested resources because we only had an hour. It might surprise you, but I love this stuff and I could talk for hours. If you want to learn more, here's a great spot to go. Google AdWords Preview Tool, Google AdWords Help Center, Dealer Teamwork blog, Dan, Eric, Katie, Kayla, the whole team have great content constantly being put up there. If there's something you want to learn more about, send us an email. Go to our content. Our blog is constantly changing. Here's the secret. We're not the smartest people in the industry. We just got the best customers, and we are really good listeners. So like more than half the people on this call are rock stars at least, and we learn from them every single day. And last but not least, we've got some Dealer Teamwork handouts to help identify poor transactional data, right? Show you how to use some of these things. And we're gonna do some mini paid search examples because the secret of life in search today is intent. And if you're doing things right, the ecosystem should work together between social media, search engines, organic and paid search. And the secret to it all is finding a balanced blend of helping the consumer as easy as possible, find what they're seeking with the fewest number of clicks with the highest level of relevance to earn their trust. Because the future of successful digital marketing is about relevance and trust. So with that, let's finish up with some action items. Please, everybody on the call, audit your paid search ads. Go out and jump in ad preview and look for the products and services you're selling. If I sell Mitsubishis, if I sell you know, Chevy, F1, you know, Chevy Silverados, Go out and do a search for it, just like your consumer. Now, here's what I say. All searches matter. Unlike a lot of other people in this industry, I have a very different approach. My daughter, Olivia, searches different than Kayla, searches different than Eric, searches different than Katie, searches probably differently than you. All searches matter. So optimize for all searches. Be in the game. Don't waste your money with bad advertising. Make sure the advertising is relevant and precise. Make sure the ad intent matches. Make sure you're taking advantage of the full character structures available with all your site links and use your transactional data. It is a wicked competitive advantage. We see between 20 and 350 times better engagement. Yes, 350% better in some cases. Okay, organic ads, right? Um, are they descriptive, generic ads? Are they milk toast ads? The more relevant and precise, specific to the search, the better the click through. Do they contain transactional data? It's some of the most important data on the planet. What's it cost? Let me ask a silly question. Anybody on this call ever buy a car without knowing what the monthly fee is? Well, then why the heck are you dropping me on a page that says MSRP? 
Or if your ad intent is 199 and you drop me on a VDP and the price MSRP is $34,000, it makes no sense to me. You broke my trust. The ad intent was lost. Okay. Does the ads match the shopper intent? That's critical. And this is not now. If you're, you're not doing this now, you're in trouble. But this will become more and more important as the competition gets better and better, as marketers get smarter, as the data keeps coming back of how search works and what people are looking for. This is important. Make sure you've replaced your standard text ads with your extended text ads. And make sure that your new ads are written to take advantage of the new formats. I already showed you examples of people that didn't take advantage of it, and they just allowed their vendor to port their old ads over. It looks like it's half the ad. It looks like you paid half the price, and you get half the conversion, or worse. And then build the ad extensions into your ads. Okay? If you don't manage your paid search, audit your vendors. Make sure these items are implemented or you're in trouble. There are dealers in America today that are regularly speaking, writing, and blogging that are not taking advantage of this today. So it looks kind of silly to me sometimes when I see people talking about this stuff, but I don't see the implementation or the application of it because it's too much of a competitive advantage. Remember what I said earlier. When we put these in place, literally within hours, the team had to change budget real time because the click-throughs were instantly noticeably different. And I was shocked at what happened. Not only were our vendors and our consumers and our customers, but the modern customer showed us the right way. So with that, let's turn on to Q&A. What do you think? Wow, that was a lot of information, Sean Stapleton. Holy moly. Audience, I hope you're enjoying this show. Yes, we are now at the point where we're going to be getting to the Q&A session. We already have some wonderful questions that have come in from the audience. So if you haven't sent in your question yet, I don't know what you're waiting for. Now is the time. Send in those questions. We're going to get to them in just a moment. Before we do that, though, I would like to direct your attention over to the handouts section of the GoToWebinar interface. So what you want to do is you want to look on that interface, look for any word that says handouts. There's probably a little triangle next to it. Click that triangle, and in there, you're going to find three very helpful handouts. One of them, of course, is today's slide deck from Sean Stapleton, so you can download that if you'd like. Then we have two others. One is a case study from Bertera Nissan. Uh, it also talks about a testimonial that Bertera Nissan gave as well when um, once they did their SEM, according to what the good folks over at Dealer Teamwork have been preaching. So uh, you definitely want to check that out. We all love case studies, don't we? And then uh, there's another one. It's kind of like a checklist. It's identifying poor transitions to ETAs. So, uh, Sean, I don't know if you want to say any more about that handout. Um, but basically, all three of these are very, very helpful. They go along with this entire presentation that you just saw. So if it were up to me, I would say download all three of them. They're free, of course. They're from our good friends over at Dealer Teamwork. And they're available to you until the very end of this broadcast. So please make sure you get those, da those handouts downloaded. If you have any problems downloading those handouts, you can just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com, and I'll help you out there. All right? All right. Um, Hey, Sean, got any game show music? Yeah. <laughs> Heck yeah. Dun, 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 oh, yeah, dun, well, it's that okay. time. If you, miss it, if you missed it at the beginning of the webinar, I announced that our good friends over at Dealer Teamwork, they're giving away some amazing prizes today on the webinar. We're going to do that now, so get to your keyboards, everyone. One of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a Dealer Teamwork hat. One lucky webinar attendee is going to win a Dealer Teamwork golf shirt. And one more of you lucky webinar attendees is going to win a Dealer Teamwork Backpack. We're going to do it in that order. All awesome prizes, so get ready, get to your keyboards. First person to write in the correct response to any of our giveaway questions will be winning one of these awesome prizes today. If you are a vendor, we're going to ask you to please kindly sit this one out. These prizes are intended for dealership personnel only. However, I do want to tell you I love having you on my show. You're always welcome on the Dealer On webinar. But Yes, this is only intended for dealership personnel. All right, everyone, here we go. Good luck. This one, we're going to give away the hat first. So this is for the hat, the dealer teamwork hat. All right, good luck, everyone. Get your swag on. Good luck, everyone. Hey, you know what? I'm going to turn on my webcam so you can see my surprise look when I read. 
your name. All right. And by the way, if you are a winner, if your name is called as the winner, I need you to immediately stop high-fiving the people around you <laughs> and write in and let me know what dealership you're from. And of course, we're also going to need your mailing address. All right. Here we go, everyone. Good luck. <clears throat> what is the largest change to paid search that Google has done in the last 15 years? That's right. Devon Rajkumar. I didn't know you were on the show. He has got fast fingers. That's right. Extended text ads. Sorry. Expanded text ads. He got it right. I got it wrong. Devon Rajkumar. Good to see you on the show, sir. Devon Rajkumar. It's official. Uh, look at you. He is the digital marketing manager at Van Dusen Chevrolet Buick in Ontario, Canada. You have won yourself a beautiful, and might I say very stylish, dealer teamwork hat. So wear that in good health, Devon. Now, Devon, you're already a winner. I'm going to ask you to kindly sit the rest of this out, all right, and let some other people win today. All right, everyone, next prize is for a dealer teamwork golf shirt. It's got a collar. It's got that wicking material. You're going to love this, all right? Um, first person to write in the correct response is going to, I know, I know, it's hard to type fast. This one is going to be easy, very fast. So good luck, everyone. How much extra does it cost to utilize extensions with your paid search ads? That's right, the answer is zero, nada, nothing, zip, free, whatever you put. Let's see who the first person was who wrote. Scott Morozik wrote in zero. That is correct, Scott Morozik. Congratulations. I'm sure I butchered your name. I'm sorry about that. Morozik. Morozek. I'm not really sure. Scott, where are you from, my friend? He's from Tubbs Brothers Ford Chrysler. I think you went on my show one other time, didn't you, Scott? Congratulations. Oh, by the way, he's in Sandusky. Does that mean anything to you, Sean? No? Uh, no. No? Okay. So, <laughs> Scott, give me your, your entire mailing address, if you wouldn't mind, sir. Okay. Uh, Devon and Scott, already two winners on the show. Third winner, big prize, the Dealer Teamwork Backpack. Answer this question correctly, and you'll be walking away a winner as well. Here we go. Good luck, everyone. The new Google Expanded Text Ad Format increased the total character ad copy to how many characters? No, we're not looking for the percentage. We're looking for the number of characters. Let's see. Who is this? Yeah, I know. A lot of people wrote in 47%, 47%. Yep, but we were looking for the number of characters. First person to write in that correct response was Gary Van Vlack. Gary Van Vlack. This is the second time you've won on my show, sir. Congratulations, Gary Van Vlack. And the correct response, of course, was 140 characters. Congratulations to Devon Rajkumar, Scott Morozik, and Gary Van Vlack. Yes, Gary, don't forget to send me your, your um, mailing address and your dealership name, if you wouldn't mind, sir. And uh, you know what? It's okay. We only had three prizes today, and there's a whole lot of you out there. But you know what? We give away cool prizes every week. So come on back to another Dealer on Webinar. And who knows? That could be the day you win a cool prize on a Dealer on Webinar. But for right now, we're going to congratulate Devon Rajkumar, Scott Morozik, and Gary Van Vlack on their fast fingers and automotive know-how. They answered those giveaway questions correctly. Congratulations, all three. Those prizes are going to come directly to you from our good friends over at Dealer Teamwork. And of course, we've got to thank our good friends over at Dealer Teamwork for their incredible generosity. Thank you so much. All right, Sean. We have some great questions from the audience. I hope you're ready for this. I'm ready. I'm excited. This is my favorite part. <laughs> well, you do it so well as well. All right, audience, if you have any more questions for Sean, get those questions in, okay? We're going to be flying through this Q&A session. First one comes from Raj Govindarajan. <laughs> I'm sure I screwed that up, but Raj, this question's for you. Now, Sean, Raj says he has multiple offers on his landing page. So he's driving users to relevant offer pages having lead generation forms instead of common one common landing page. Because the user on the landing page might get lost or confused with all those offers that are there to click on. Is he on the right path or is he breaking the customer journey? 
No, he's on the right path as long as he, there is a relevance to what he's landing on. So if he has every one of his used car vehicles on one page, that's not relevant. If the page, for example, if, if you're searching for the F-150, Ford F-150, and the page was only about F-150s, it could talk about the different trim levels, different MSRPs, and the different options. What I don't want to do is put Mustangs on that page because it's not relevant to the original ad intent. So I think he's doing it right. Make sure that the landing page matches the ad intent. In other words, what is the ad intent that caught my attention, that stood out for me to stop my day to click on it? And then it must match with the fewest number of clicks when I land on the next page, which should be the dealer's website. And it should be a smart, dynamic, responsive landing page that's inside the domain authority, no microsites, no frame-ins, nothing silly like that, or that's going to hurt you long-term. But specifically, if I'm doing it and I own a Ford store, my pages will build, be built out model trim specific, so I'd have an F-150 page. On that page could be the Lariat, the King Ranch, the Raptor, etc. And I want to talk about the different MSRPs and different versions of the product. But I need to stick, keep it in that category, because if you expand that out too much, it'd just be too many options and it would get confusing. Thank you so much. Great answer, Raj. I hope that answer. Oh, Raj wrote in. He says, perfect. Thank you. Good luck with that. Mike. Thank you, Raj. Great, great question. Call for anything if you want to go through it more. I love it. All right. Next question comes in from Bruce. Bruce says, how do we leverage the new Google featured snippet box that takes up quite a bit of real estate in between the paid and organic results on both mobile and desktop searches? Great question, Bruce. It's very simple. I mean, first of all, you're going to pick and choose which one of the snippets that you find are most relevant. And then when you're building the ad, you're just going to select which ones that you want to have featured in that offer. So it, first of all, good to hear from you, Bruce. You're an awesome guy. Call me. I miss you. But um, when you're building your ad, there's an ability, and I'll show you just where you add it. And you're going to select which one of those snippets you want and where you want it to go. So search, seek the right answers, the right questions. Go ahead and select which ones you want. When you're building your ad, you go ahead and select it and just hit save. It's very, very, very simple. We'll show you how to do it. It's Bruce, much easier than you think. Bruce, take him up on that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Great question, Bruce. All right, next question comes in from Mitch. He says, what are Sean's thoughts on dynamic search? I think dynamic search is absolutely the requirement, and here's why. Static search is static. It's answering the question for maybe one person. What dynamic everything allows you to do is in real time inject the data that's most relevant to either the search, the customer, the look, the feel, the want, what they're looking for. Dynamic is real time. Dynamic changes. It gives you the ability to be in front of the customer with what they're searching for at that moment. Searches could change between today and tomorrow. Search intent could change between the first search and the second one. Maybe I understand now what the payment is. Now I want to understand could I afford the next model up or the next model down. Maybe I'm a price buyer. Maybe I'm a feature buyer. Maybe I'm a safety buyer. You don't always know the ad intent. So the more specific we can be about the ad intent and the more options we can give the customers, the better it will be. The old days was, look, manage the consumer by managing the access to the data. Now it's exactly the opposite. If you try to limit the data consumers get to, they're going to hit the back button and leave. Help consumers find the answers they're looking for by answering the question in the most precise and the easiest way possible. And it's got to be on mobile. Mobile is everything. So if the ads aren't built for mobile, it's not going to look good on mobile. It's not going to rank well. It's not going to perform well. Thank you so much. Great answer, Sean. And Mitch, if you have a follow-up question. Oh, never mind. Mitch says, excellent. Thank you, Sean. I agree. All right, next question comes to you from one of our winners today, Gary Van Vlack. All right, here's his question. Should the name of a company include words like new or used be put ahead of you when using the expanded text ads? We have a very small independent that's ranking way higher than us, even though we're spending way more money on SEM currently. So I guess he wants well, to know how the independent is, is beating him, you know? Well, kind of funny. So um, one of my co-founder partners, Eric, is involved in multiple independent stores, and he's regularly outranking bigger stores. We are regularly outranking 
Ford Motor Company in our own backyard. We're outranking tier twos in our own backyard using relevance and the proper data structures and having high quality score. It's not about who spends the most money. It's about who's answering the question the best and what the experience was from the prior person. Those are critical elements to determining ad rank, ad factor, and who they're gonna serve up. How can I prove it? You and I can do anything we want with paid search, but organic we can't control. So how do I know we're on the right path? When we see our customers organically ranking hundreds of miles away from their primary marketing area, the search engines are making the decision on who to rank organically based on the highest relevance. And what's incredibly rewarding to us is we see our own customers ranking organically two, three, five states away. What it tells me is the people in the current market aren't doing the things correctly. The search engines are not easy to be tricked. They're getting smarter and smarter. So don't try to shortcut it, don't try to trick them. Follow the rules they want, the structures they require, and follow the rules correctly. They'll reward you with higher ad rank, better traffic, and better exposure. And ultimately, if you're doing the right things right, your cost of doing business goes down. But remember, paid, we can manipulate a little bit more based on payment and rank and things like that and what we're willing to pay. Organics, we can't. So if you want a good indicator of how well you're doing, you should start showing up organically. If you're not showing up organically in your own backyard, let's go find out what the problem is because you better fix it soon because the sooner you do show up, the better it is for you. And by not showing it up, maybe people don't even know you exist. Sean Stapleton preaching it today. Wowza. Okay, Gary wrote back and he says, thank you. Sounds like we have some relevancy issues to tend to. Well, I'll tell you what, Gary, if you need some help, I don't know if there's any really better uh, reference out there in the auto industry than the very wonderful Sean Stapleton. So don't feel like you can't connect with him and see if there's maybe a way he might be able to help you, okay? All right, yeah, Gary. Give me a call and jump in, your, jump in your Google ad preview, run a couple ad searches for your inventory and see what shows up. You don't like it, give us a call. If you get your current vendor, show them what you got and tell them what you don't like. All right, I like that idea. Gary, don't pass that up. All right, thank you so much. If you have a follow-up question, we'd love to hear back from you, Gary. And, uh, and by the way, enjoy that backpack. Okay, next question comes in from Judith. She says, is there a way to force your extensions to show more often since Google determines which ones to show and usually doesn't show all of them? Ooh, Judith, good one. There's not, not force, but there's a way to get a higher relevancy or have them show up more often. Most important is your ad position or ad rank, right? So extensions can be you know, improved or disproved based on certain things adding keywords to it, but the number one thing um, for your ad extensions is your ad rank. Is your ad rank high enough for the extensions to show? That's probably the number one question I get. It's a great question. So ad extensions can be approved or disapproved by all kinds of things, but high quality ads, high quality intent, maximizing the number of characters, that combination with your ad rank will determine how often your extensions show up or your expanded text ads show up. So it's not an absolute science, but it is an absolute science. If you're not doing certain things right, they'll never show up. Interesting, okay. Um, Judith loved your answer, but she has a follow-up question too. She sure. says, how do you use extensions to your advantage when you continuously have to bid against the OEM who will always have a way bigger budget than you? Guess <laughs> what? This is a secret that everyone should take out of this call. The OEM, even with their big budgets, don't win as much as you think. Literally, did you show the, do you remember the queries I showed you? Every one of those queries, we outranked the OEM. So it is not what you think. Yes, Ford Motor Company's got a big budget. Yes, Auto Trader's got a big budget. Cars got a big budget. Guess what? It's the relevance. You can outrank any of those behemoths in your backyard by doing the right things right over a long period of time. Yes, they got big ad budgets. Yes, they got tons of traffic. But what quality of traffic and what's that traffic doing when they get there? If they go to those sites and bounce a lot, the ad rank's gonna go down. The first thing we need to do to make you rank is go look at the, or the structure of what you're doing to make sure that the bots can crawl it, index it, and rank it properly. Mm -hmm. And then make sure you're updating it regularly with 
with the right context and transactional data, that's going to bring more traffic. And the higher the quality traffic and the better experience, the higher your ranking goes up. Yes, you can outrank an OEM. Yes, you can outrank a third-party lead provider. I'll prove it to you. There you go. All right, Judith, thank you so much for the great questions. All right, we only have three more questions left, and then we'll close out the show. All right, Sean? Absolutely. Unless other questions come in. Um, <laughs> all right, next question comes in from Bruce. Bruce wants to know, how can a dealer make sure that they are getting an accurate traffic count? That's a great, great, great uh, question and comment. Um, we like to use multiple different forms. So we typically, at Dealer Teamwork, we have seven different out-of-the-box tracking devices. You know, Google Analytics, uh, you know, Vista Dash, uh, different, you know, Google Data Studio, et cetera, um, event tracking, UTM. There's multiple formats and multiple options. We leave it up to our customers. So our customers choose what they want to use and why. Yes, our dedicated Google certified professionals will help you based on what you're trying to achieve and what you're trying to understand. But the number one thing about digital marketing is it's very transparent. And so the more transparent, the, more, the easier it becomes to show cause and effect. And what everyone's trying to understand is, did my digital marketing disk, does it sell cars? Did it make me money? What was the ROI? Well, with proper tracking and evaluation, you can start to see, did that money, did that ad convert to what I want? And you need to make sure that you have a definition of what a conversion is, and you make sure that your, all of your traffic is tagged and tracked so you can measure and monitor it. Start with the baseline, understand your budget, and work from there. But he's right. If you don't have your tracking in place and you don't have a baseline, how do you know if you're going the right direction? Right, right, right. All right, Bruce, thank you. Always nice to hear from you, sir. Okay, last couple of questions, and then we'll close out the show. Raj has the next question. He says, what is the frequency for optimizing the ad copy? However, I'm monitoring the performance of the ads frequently, but how long do I need to wait to re-optimize the ad copy and add a new set of keywords? Well, it's, it's a great question. I, I believe that it's as often as it makes sense. We have customers Which is how that often? are updating. Like, can you, should you wait a week? Yeah. Or? <laughs> no, I, I, well, I have people that are doing it multiple times a day. Wow, really? I have people that are wow. day trading cars. Yeah, because the next person searching, what do you want them to see? You no longer have to build an ad for a month. That's the old thinking. Once it goes to print, it's print. This isn't print. You can change it anytime you want. So why run a course of a campaign if it's not performing? Why waste the money? This is real time. Digital marketing is real time. Matter of fact, one of the most important things of digital marketing is speed. So don't wait on it. If the phones aren't ringing, make some changes. Because digital marketing and search is real time, you can see cause and effect. I could literally go in and optimize an ad, change a price point. If my phone doesn't ring an hour later, guess what? I didn't do it right. I can then change prices and see when my phone start to ring. We can evaluate that on an hourly basis. That might be a little bit of aggressive for the beginning, but I would tell you that I'd be looking at this at least daily, if not once or twice a day. Interesting. Okay, Raj. Oh, Raj wrote in. Great. Thank you, Sean. All right, last question. You've been so patient, Nicholas. Thank you so much. Nicholas has the last question. This is a very telling question, by the way. He says, hi, we're currently outsourcing to a company, managing our website and our Google AdWords campaign, as well as our CRM providers. Yet... They refuse to give us access to our AdWords account. They do manage a ton of other dealerships here in Canada, and they seem to use a one-for-all recipe. So the question is, should we drop them? <laughs> yeah, this is from goodbye, Nicholas. blow them out. Yeah, blow them out. One, one, one to many doesn't work. I mean, come on. That is, that is thank you, 1983, right? So, um, Having access to your account for visibility is important. I understand why they don't give right access so people don't run with scissors and make mistakes, but full transparency, educating and showing why, I think is part of the, I think a vendor paying the tab has the right to understand what you're doing and why, mm -hmm. right? I understand why some people protect the buy bids and how things are going because they don't want an inexperienced person or somebody to make a mistake, particularly if they're held accountable for budgeting and things like that. However, I believe in full transparency. I believe most of the industry is going that way very quickly. 
The old advertisers are old. Their models don't work. I don't mean to shatter people's myths, but mass marketing has been dead for years. The only people don't want you to know it's mass marketers. Mass marketing today is very clear. Search engines and social media. I'm going to quote one of my favorite players in the whole world, Wayne Gretzky. Don't skate to where the puck is. Skate to where the puck will be. Put your ads where your customer is going to see them in a format what they're looking for. It's very simple. Well, that's it. You use a Wayne Gretzky uh, quote. That's it. I mean, I'm done. <laughs> now, <laughs> Nicholas, I hope that answered your question. We wish you the best of luck, sir. And audience, thank you so much for being an incredible audience today. Uh, by the way, Nicholas says thanks a lot. And certainly, Nicholas, call me. I'd love to talk to you about it. <laughs> Nicholas, you should totally call him. Okay, so Sean Stapleton, you never disappoint me, my friend. Thank you so much for being here today. You put on a spectacular show. Thank you so much. So many, so many great nuggets that you gave out there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I hope it won't be too long before I see you back on this show again. And of course, I'm going to be seeing you at uh, the upcoming Digital Dealer as well, correct? Yes, and I just want to say, you do an amazing job. Dealer on, the whole company, and you, you're you just you're just a breath of fresh air. You make it so easy and so fun to share all this information. You're such just a positive person. So thank you for being such a great host, a moderator, a mentor to many. And I can't wait to see you. Give you a big hug. And swag's on the way to you and your family as well. Thank you. You're so kind to me. Thank you so much, Mr. Stapleton. I really appreciate it. Audience, if you want to uh, see more of Sean Stapleton, you are definitely going to have your chance. He's going to be uh, presenting at the upcoming Internet Battle Plan 22. That's next week, baby. So hopefully you're going to be around there in Florida. And uh, he's going to pre be presenting how to use transactional data as your biggest competitive advantage. He's going to show the best ways to improve your marketing efforts and get more buyers to see your vehicles. Just another incredible addition to an already tremendous event. Because, yeah, as I told you at the beginning of the show, two people from DealerOn are going to be there as well. we got the amazing Greg Gifford talking about SEO and the incredible Sean Raines talking about SEM and branding. So this is going to be an amazing event. If you haven't already gotten your tickets, guess what? You still can. They haven't sold out quite yet, although they are getting quite full. Remember, it's internetbattleplan.com. Hope to see you there in Clearwater. And, yeah, we're going to close out the show in a little bit. I know you already went past that slide, but that's okay. I just want you to know, we want to know what you thought of today's presentation. You're going to be getting a very short survey. It is only three questions. Please fill it out. We want to know what you thought of today's presentation. I thought it was great, but guess what? My opinion doesn't count. We want to know what you thought. So make sure you fill out that questionnaire for us. It really helps us out. And, oh my goodness, can you believe this? We have an amazing webinar again another one next Thursday you got to sign up for this one invitations are going to be going out tomorrow so keep an eye out for that how to win over the most difficult customers by the one and only Elise Kephart now I just want you to to put yourself in this mindset some customers they go online and they only ask about pricing and some of them don't even give their real phone numbers or they leave you only an email or maybe you've even sent a quote to a customer and they never respond back. Or when they finally do respond back, guess what? They bought elsewhere. So frustrating, isn't it? Does any of this sound familiar? Let's be real. There's always going to be difficult customers. But do you know how to win over even the toughest of shoppers? Guess what? Elise Kephart certainly does. In her previous record-breaking webinar, Elise shared her entire Internet sales process 2.0, which earned her an incredible 30% close ratio. Now we're going to go and up the game and learn the details of how to win over those challenging customers who are outside of your basic Internet lead. In this never-before-seen presentation, Elise Kephart is going to share her proven strategies and tactics to win over those problematic customers and overcome unreasonable demands and tricky objections. This unparalleled one hour presentation is going to include why customers don't give out their phone numbers, how to overcome the customer's perception, how to get a phone number and get attention, call to action specifics with customers who only want price, advanced screen sharing for price comparisons, and feet to the fire video email price quotes, and so much more. If you've ever had a difficult customer, and really, who of us hasn't, then this is an hour of automotive awesomeness that simply must not be missed. Register now to learn Elise Kephart's secrets on how to win over the most difficult customers 
Please only show up if you can handle the knowledge bombs. Don't forget, Deal Around's weekly webinars are held Thursdays, 12 noon Eastern, 11 a.m. Central, 10 a.m. Mountain, and 9 a.m. Pacific. We have some incredible webinar subjects planned to round out 2017. But if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions regarding our webinars and our topics, hey, contact me directly. I'd love to hear from you. I'm everywhere on the Internet. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, you name it. I'm on all the automotive social networks. Or you know what? You can just email me directly at eliana at dealeron.com. I love to hear from you. So I want to thank you all so very much for spending this time with us today. And I hope to see you all on another webinar in our continuing education series. Take care, everyone. Thank you. God bless.